Welcome to College Algebra. In this lecture video, we're going to talk about polynomial division and the division algorithm. So, uh, what I want to kind of show you here in a minute is the division algorithm. But before we do that, let's take a look at the concept of division and factors. Now, we learned this a long time ago. Um, for example, when we have 24 divided by 3, we know the answer is 8. 3 will go into 24 evenly, so the answer will be 8 remaining 0. So what that means is, 3 is actually a factor of 24, because 24 is equal to 8 times 3. So as a matter of fact, the answer A is also a factor of the 24. Now in terms of algebra, when we do factoring, x squared minus 4 for example we know difference of square will give me x plus 2 times x minus 2 so what that means is if I take my polynomial x squared minus 4 divided by any one of these two factors my answer will be the other one remaining 0 so in a way we are saying okay x plus 2 x minus 4 are the factors of the polynomial x squared minus 4 Therefore, when we divide, it will go into it evenly. So, the, in the factor theorem, it says for a polynomial, any type of polynomial like my x squared minus 4, if f of c is equal to 0, then x minus c is a factor of f of x. So, what I mean is, this x minus c can be like my x minus 2 or it can be my x plus 2. So if I will plug in maybe like a c which is like a 2 or a negative 2 then if I will plug in these two x value into my function then my y value will actually equal to 0. If that's the case, then x minus c is a factor of my polynomial. Okay, that's by the factor theorem. All right, and we'll talk more about this just in a minute. Okay, we'll talk more about this. Now, I want to um, kind of refresh your memory on the um, long division. So, for example, if I want to do this by hand, 48,642 divided by 22, we know the dividend goes to the inside. Divisor 22 goes on the outside. So, normally when we do this, we say 22 will go into 48 about two times. So, the first question 2 go on top of the 8. 2 times 22 is 44. I will subtract and I get a 4. The next step, bring down the 6 and repeat my process again. 22 going to 46 2 times again. They'll give me another 44. If I subtract again, that's a 2. Alright, next step, bring down the 4. And 22 go into 24 one times to get so that will give me 22 down here. If I subtract, that's a 2. Bring down the next 2. 22 go into 22 evenly one time. So that will be 22 down here. But if I subtract, I get a 0. So what I'm saying by the factor theorem is if my remainder is 0, Okay, that means 2211, 2211 is a factor of my 48,640. Okay, now I want to do the same thing again, but say it differently. Let's pretend every number you see is a term. Alright, so my dividend consists of five terms, four, eight, six, four, two. 
All right, my divisor is two terms. Every number is a term. All right, so the way I'm gonna say it, doing the same thing to say it slightly different. Here we go. I got two terms on the outside, so I will go into two terms in the inside at a time. So my first quotient gotta go on top of my second term eight. You use the first term on the outside to go into the first term in the inside. First term on the outside, go into the first term in the inside. How many times? Two go into four, two times. So the next step, write my quotient on top. Then, take the quotient on the top and multiply the terms on the outside. So I got two terms on the outside, so here we will say, my quotient 2 times the first term and you will times the second term so 2 times 2 is 4 that go below the first term 2 times the second term 2 is 4 that will go below the second term 8 alright put the product below the dividend that's what I just did subtract so long division, we will subtract, and what we want is cancel out the first term in the inside. That's what we're trying to do. So when I so four minus four cancels out. Eight minus four will be four. So once I write my write my remainder down here, after I subtract, we'll bring down the next term, and the reason is because four is only one term. On the outside, I got two terms. So two terms got to go into two terms at a time. So I bring down the next term, 6, and start the process again. Take the first term on the outside, go into the first term in the inside. How many times? 2 go into 4, 2 times. Put my quotient on the next, above the third term. And once I wrote my quotient on top, then we will multiply the two terms on the outside. 2 times 2 is 4. Put below my first term. All right, my quotient 2 times the second term. 2 times 2 is another 4. This time we'll put below the 6. Long division, we will subtract. And again, my first term will always cancel out. So during the entire process, what I want is cancel out my first term in the inside. So 6 minus 4, okay, that will be 2. 2 is only one term, so I'm going to bring down the next term and start my process over again. First term on the outside, going to the first term in the inside, how many times? One time on top. Alright, so once I rule the 1 on top, we will multiply the two terms on the outside. Okay. And so the process repeats itself. So generally speaking, there are six steps, okay, that we keep on doing it over and over in the long division algorithm. Okay, so a couple of things to keep in mind when we do long division. Okay, when we do long division, what we're trying to do is cancel out the first term in the inside. Okay, so but we also got to line it up our quotient correctly you know when we first begin so let me show you some example real quick and I will show you uh, I will also explain to you why throughout the entire process um, I don't write any variables alright so use a polynomial long division to write the following fraction in form of q sub x plus rx over d sub x so this is basically saying if I have something like a, I don't know, maybe like a 8 divided by 3. When I do long division on 8 divided by 3 in the preschool, um, 3 will go into 8 two times. That's a 6. When you subtract, the remainder is 2. And then we can write this answer as in terms of a mixed number. So the quotient on top is a whole number plus the remainder becomes the numerator the divisor stays as 3 so most of the time we don't write it this way most of the time in preschool we write it as 2 and 2 thirds so what's between the whole number and the fraction is a plus sign 
okay so we will actually write our answer like a mixed number answer okay this is what this part is trying to tell you all right so as we write out the long division uh, make sure there's no missing terms five four three two one power and then no power divisor two power one power no power so there's no missing terms so let's write it out this is a bit long Plus six x plus eight. All, right. All that divided by five x squared minus three x minus two. All right, so no missing term. So let's begin. Same saying. I got three terms on the outside, so you will go into three terms in the inside at a time. So my first quotient got to be on top of the x to the third power here. Step number one, take my first term on the outside, go into the first term in the inside. How many times? One time. All right, next step, multiply my terms on the outside. So one times five is five, put below the first term. Then 1 times negative 3, which will be negative 3, put below the second term. And then 1 times negative 2, which is negative 2, put below my third term. Long division, we will subtract. So when I subtract, what happens every time? My first term, 5 minus 5, will always cancel out. Okay, let's subtract. This is not 13, this is negative 13. Subtracts negative 3. What is negative 13 subtracts negative 3? Ne subtract a negative 3 here, become plus 3. So that will be negative 10. All right, subtract. This is 19. 19 subtracts negative 2. Positive 21. So after I subtract, I only got two terms here. Because I got three terms on the outside, I will, I will need to do three terms at a time. So I will bring down my next term, negative 25 down. And start my process over again. All right, I purposely leave the space here. Because what occupies this space is the variable. So rather than keep on writing all these x to the fifth, x to the fourth, and so on, all these variable and along with the coefficient, all these terms will be canceling out throughout the entire process. So I'm not gonna keep on writing the same thing over and over where they're all gonna get canceled out. So instead I just purposely leave a space where it's supposed to be occupied by the variable. So once I line up my first quotient correctly, I know this one is going to be 1x to the third power here. So this entire column that you're going to see in a minute is where all by, it will all occupy by the variable. All right, let's continue our process. Step number one, take the first term on the outside, go into the first term in the inside. How many times? If I go into negative 10, negative two times. So I'll put my negative 2 on top of my x squared term. And once I wrote my quotient on top, then we will multiply. Remember, I got three terms on the outside, okay? So the negative 2 will multiply all three terms. Negative 2 times 5, negative 10. Negative 2 times negative 3, positive 6. Negative 2 times negative 2, positive 4. Long division, we will subtract. And when I take negative 10, subtract another negative 10, it got to cancel out. Same thing, subtracting always becomes zero. This is 21 subtracts a six, which is 15. 
negative 25 subtracts 4. If you can say it like that, you will type in it like that. Negative 25 subtracts a 4, which will give me negative 29. Alright, this is only two terms. I gotta do three at a time, so I bring down my next term, positive 6 down, and start my process over. My first term on the outside go into the first term in the inside. 5 go into 15 three times. What kind of three? Positive three times. So now I take my positive three times five, positive 15. Positive three times negative three, negative nine. Positive three times negative two, negative six. Long division, we will subtract. So 15 subtracts 15, cancels out. Negative 29 subtracts a negative 9. Negative 29 subtracts a negative 9. Negative 20. Be careful. If you subtract it wrong, then the next quotient up top will be incorrect. Be careful. 6 subtracts negative 6. Positive 12. Bring down my last term, positive 8 down. Start the process over. First term on the outside, 5. Go into my first term in the inside, negative 20. How many times? Negative 4 times. Once I roll my quotient on top, we multiply the 3 term on the outside. Negative 4 times 5, negative 20. Negative 4 times negative 3, the second term, positive 12. Negative 4 times negative 2, positive 8. Long division, we will subtract. And as you can see, when I subtract the same thing, that becomes 0. So 12 subtract 12 is 0. 8 subtract 8 is also 0. So my remainder will be 0. And when I get done with the problem, we look back up to the top and see my first quotient 1 is lined up with the x to the third column. So the next one after x to the third power, the negative 2 got to be negative 2 x squared. And the next one is going to be positive 3 x. So all these spaces I left is occupied by the variable. That's why I'm that's why I'm not keep on writing down the x's because what I'm working with is coefficient throughout the whole process. So my answer x to the third minus two x squared plus three x minus four. There's no remainder. What that means is this is a factor of this big old polynomial. So is the divisor. If you can divide into it evenly that means the divisor and your quotient are factors to the polynomial. Now let's try another one. So at, before you write out everything uh, for long division, make sure you check for missing terms. Got to see all the exponents. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, no problem. Everybody's here. This is 2 power, then I'm missing a 1 power. So what's a missing term mean? Missing term means the coefficient of that term is zero. So we need that term to occupy okay, the space because we're supposed to line them up by the exponent. So without writing in zero x to the first power, then I'm not going to line up my all my exponent correctly. Okay. So missing term because the coefficient is zero. All right, so let's try this again. And after a while, this does get a little bit overdone um, because it's the same process over and over. So make sure we stay focused when we do this because any mistake will actually make the following quotient incorrect. All right. So after I write in the 0x to the first power, I actually have three terms on the outside. So 
That means it will go into three terms in the inside at a time. So we put our first quotient on top of the 12x squared. Take my first term on the outside, go into the first term in the inside. Two times. And once I wrote my quotient 2 on top, we begin to multiply the terms on the outside. 2 times 2 is 4, put below my first term. 2 times 0 is 0, I put below my second term. I always put my 0 as positive here. And then 2 times positive 2 is positive 4, put below my third term. Long division, we will subtract. Alright, so when I subtract my first term, 4 minus 4 will always cancel out. Alright, let's subtract. Negative 6 subtract a 0, still going to be negative 6. 12 subtracts 4, positive 8. Alright, I only got two terms right now, so I gotta bring down my next term. Because I gotta do three at a time. Because I got three terms on the outside. So, repeat the process. First term on the outside go into first term in the inside. How many times? Two go into negative six negative three times so that will put it above my following terms okay negative three times two negative six put below my first term negative six negative three times zero zero right, one more negative three times positive two negative six Long division, we will subtract. The first term will always cancel out. Alright, subtract 8 minus 0, still 8. 6 subtracts negative 6, positive 12. Okay, this is only two terms, so bring down the last term, positive 4 down repeat my process one more time first term on the outside go into the first term in the inside two go into positive eight positive four times once I roll my quotient on top multiply the three terms on the outside so four times two eight positive four times zero zero positive four times positive two positive eight Long division, we will subtract, and every time I subtract, the first term got to cancel out. Okay, so 12 minus 0, still 12. 4 minus 8, negative 4. Okay, so when I get done with the problem, I look back up to the top. There's no more term to bring down, so this is it. Look out to the top and see my x squared. Excuse me, see my 2 is lined up with the x squared column. So this is going to be 2x squared minus 3x. This is a whole entire x column. So this 12 means 12x plus 4. Alright, so this time I have a remainder. So we got to write our answer as the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. My caution Okay, two x squared minus three x plus four plus the remainder twelve x minus four over the divisor. The divisor was just two x squared plus two. Roll the zero x in as a placeholder during the process, but I can go back to use the 2x squared plus 2. And that will be my answer. Okay, a quotient plus a remainder over the divisor. Alright, now this one is a little bit tricky. Um, missing term here is a little bit more. 
five, four, three, two, one. And who am I missing? I'm missing zero x to the zero power. Anything to zero power is one. One times zero is still zero. So I gotta add another zero on the back of it. Remember now, the, the key part is line up the exponent, line up the variable correctly. Line your quotient correctly with the appropriate exponents. Otherwise, your exponent will all be on the whack. Oh, this is negative x squared, so I hope you don't mind if I purposely write negative 1x squared plus 2x plus 0. Okay, that zero is a missing term. All right, divisor, three power, missing the two power, one power, and missing the zero power. So we will write as three x to the third plus zero x squared, the missing term, minus one x plus zero. Okay, the zero is the constant term that's missing. I got four terms on the outside. So I will go into four terms in the inside at a time. First quotient, got to go on top of the x squared. Take my first term on the outside, go into the first term in the inside three times. And then we begin to multiply. Three times three is nine. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 3 times 0 is 0. Long division, we will subtract. And when we subtract, the first term always cancels out. All right. Now, what happens if the second term also becomes 0? You write it. Because your key job during the process only canceled out the first term in the inside. So it, it, if it just happened where the first two terms become zero, you got to write the second term being zero because that's your next quotient. Three minus zero is three. Negative nine subtract negative three, I think it's negative six. Negative one minus zero is negative one. All right, bring down the next term, positive two down. Remember, I got to do four at a time. Start the process over. First term on the outside, go into the first term on the inside. Three, go into three. Positive one time. One times three is three. One times zero is zero. One times negative one is negative one. One times zero is zero. Long division, we will subtract. First term always cancels out. Negative 6 subtract 0, negative 6. Negative 1 subtract negative 1 is 0. You got to write it. 2 minus nothing is positive 2. Alright, let's bring down the last term. Positive 0 down. Start the process over. First term on the outside, go into the first term in the inside. Three going to negative six, negative two times. Once I roll my quotient on top, we multiply the four terms on the outside. That would be negative six. Negative two times zero is zero. Negative two times negative one, positive two. Negative two times positive zero, zero. So if I will cancel out, if I will subtract, my first term will always cancel out. As a matter of fact, 0 minus 0 is 0, 2 minus 2 is 0, 0 minus 0 is 0. So I have no remainder. So that will give me 3x squared plus 1x minus 2. So if I don't have a remainder, my answer would just be the quotient itself. 3x squared plus x minus 2. If I do have a remainder, I will write them in this form. Okay. Alrighty. So uh, I'm going to stop my video here for the long division algorithm. Thank you for watching.